Hey everyone, this is Kamran and today we will be talking about the tree data structure. So far in this series, we have talked about the arrays, hash tables, linked lists, stacks and queues. All of these were linear data structures. Trees on the other hand are a hierarchical data structures and they are used to represent the hierarchical data. For example, to represent the organizational hierarchy, the directory structures, database indexes and compiler design and so on, we need the tree data structure. Alright, so here we have the representation of a tree data structure. The elements of a tree are called the nodes of the tree. The path connecting two different nodes is called an edge. The nodes at the end of the tree, which do not have any children nodes, are called the leaf nodes. The first node of the tree is called the root node. And the node above any node is called the parent of that node. For example, if you look at this, here we have 1, which is the parent of the node 20. And then we have 30 which is the parent of the node 1 and it is the grandparent of the node 20. Next we have the height of the tree, which is the maximum distance or the maximum number of edges to a leaf node from the root node. So if you look at this tree, the far most nodes from the root are 20, 31, 43 and 49. And each has the distance of 3. So 1, 2 and 3. So we can say that the height of this tree is 3. Next we have the node height which is the maximum distance from the node to the leaf node in that node's children. So if you look at the node 1, it has the height of 1. And if you look at the node 30, the height is 2 because the maximum distance from the node 30 to the leaf nodes 20 and 31 is 2. Alright, so now that we know what the trees are and the different terminologies, let's look at the different types of the trees. There are several different types of the trees, but in this video we'll only be covering the binary tree and the binary search tree. First of all, we have the binary tree, which is the type of tree in which the maximum children a node can have is 2. So for example, if you look at this tree, it is not a binary tree, because nodes 30 and 32 each has 3 children nodes. So if we remove these two nodes, now we have the binary tree, because none of the nodes have more than 2 child nodes. Next we have the binary search trees, which are the binary trees, but the nodes are in the sorted format. So if you look at the tree on the right side, there is no sorting order of the nodes. We can rearrange the nodes of this binary tree in this format to make it a binary search tree. The binary search trees have a couple of properties that they follow. The first one is that the value in each left node is smaller than the parent node. So if you look at this tree, we have 1 on the left of the parent node 8 because 1 is smaller than 8. 8 is on the left of 22 because 8 is smaller than 22. And 30 is on the left of the parent node 32 because it's smaller than 32. The second property is that the value on each right node is greater than the parent node. So if you look at this tree, 10 is on the right of 8, 32 is on the right of 22, 43 is on the right of 32 and so on. And the next property is that each of the values on the left side of the root are all smaller than the root node. So if you look at the values on the left side of the root node here, 1, 5, 8, 10 and 20 are all smaller than the root node 22. And all the values on the right side of the root node are all greater than the root node. So if you look at this tree here, 30, 31, 32, 43 and 49 are all greater than the root node. Alright, so now that we know what the binary search trees are and what are the different properties of the binary search tree, let's see how we can search for a node in the binary search trees. Let's say that we have this tree and we need to find 31. We can start from the top, we'll compare this node's value with 31. 31 is greater than 22, so we'll move to the right side of the tree. Next we have 32, now 31 is smaller than 32, so we'll move to the left node. Next 31 is greater than 30, so we'll move to the right, where we have the node that we're looking for. Now before we talk about the complexity of the search operation, let's talk about the insertion and see how we can insert new nodes into the tree. Let's say that we have a node with the value of 0 that we need to insert into this tree. We'll start with the root node, now 0 is less than 22, so we'll go to the left side of the tree. Then we have 8, now 0 is less than 8, so again we'll go left. And finally we have 1, now 0 is less than 1, and since we don't have any nodes on the left of this subtree, we'll just insert this node to the 
left of the one. All right, let's take another example. Let's say that we now have 29 that we need to insert into this tree. Again, we'll start with the root node. Now 29 is greater than 22, so we'll go right. It is smaller than 32, so we'll go left. And again, it is smaller than 30. And since there are no children of the node 30, so we will insert this node at the left of the node 30. And that is how the nodes are inserted into the binary search tree. All right, now binary search trees can be of two types, unbalanced and balanced. Let's look at the unbalanced trees first. Let's say that we start with the root node of one. Now imagine if we keep inserting new nodes to this tree. And the numbers that we get to insert in this tree, they are received in a sorted format. So we have one as the root node. Let's say that we get two now. Since two is greater than one, so we insert it to the right side of the root node. Next we get three, which will be inserted to the right side of the node two. And in the same way, four will be inserted to the right side of the node three. Now if we look at the shape of this tree, we have this linear depth of the tree where each insertion results in the increase of the tree height. So it has become a linked list more than a tree. This sort of tree is called an unbalanced tree. Insert and search operations become really slow in the unbalanced trees and the complexity of these operations is linear. So O of N. And the second type is the balanced trees. In the balanced trees, we avoid this linear depth of the tree. And how do we do that? So whenever we insert a new node to the tree, we rearrange the tree in such a way that the number of nodes on the left of the tree is equal to the number of nodes on the right side of the tree. So in a balanced tree, we'll get the same tree as this. The complexity of search and insert operations in a balanced tree is logarithmic. So it is much faster as compared to unbalanced tree. All right, so finally we have the tree traversal or how we can visit each node of the tree. There are three different ways to traverse a tree. In order traversal, where we visit the left node, then we visit the parent node, and then we visit the right node. So if we have this tree, we will visit left, that is one, use the value, then visit two, that is root, use the value, and finally we will visit the right node, that is three. So we will get one, two, and three. Next we have the pre-order traversal, where we visit the root node first, then we visit the left node, and finally we visit the right node. So if we have this tree, we will get two, then we'll get one, and finally we will get three. And lastly, we have the post-order traversal, where we visit the left node, then the right node, and then the root node. So in this example, we will get one, then three, and finally we will get two. And that is all for this one. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And I will see you in the next one.